Hi everyone. Hi. Friendship Circle is proud to present um, Cardone Keller Williams Real Estate. Should you sell your own house? Should you uh, stay in your own house? What, are the, what is the right thing to do now? Is your home too big for you? We are lucky to have guest Christina Cardone with us today to address these issues. And we thank the people who came in person to hear this, as well as we welcome you to reach out to Christina directly to learn next steps with your home. Christina, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I am Christina Cardone from Keller Williams Real Estate. Um, my father, Dominic Cardone, will be joining me shortly. Um, he just had a meeting that kept him running a bit late. But we're part of a team, a family team of realtors at the Keller Williams office in media. And one of our specialties on our team is a designation we call senior real estate specialist. In fact, we also, my father and I both also teach that designation as well as um, having earned that designation. And um, it's something we, we know that there's a real need for out there in the marketplace all across the country because there are many, many people um, who have owned their homes for a long time or well, maybe not so long, but whose living situations change and whose needs change as they get older. And sometimes it's hard to know um, all the options and resources that you have to, um, you know, to figure out uh, if you stay in your home or need to move out of your home and find another place to live and how you would do that if you wanted to. So these are some of the things that we teach uh, teach to other realtors, but today we wanna help, um, help you and help anybody listening to know you can reach out to us as a resource. Um, you know, whether you have questions today or sometime in the future, whether it's yourselves or any of your friends and family that you're talking to. So um, one of the things, you know, and I'm sure you all know because you're, you're living this, um, that, you know, needs change as you get older and how comfortable you are living in any home may change. It's something, a home you may love, um, you know, a few years later may be uncomfortable or even unsafe. And then, of course, you also have to think about finances, some homes, and I know this happens here in Delaware County a lot, um, where when taxes change, that can make it very hard to continue to afford to live where you are, utilities as well, and all the other living expenses that go with it. So there's, you know, there's the physical uh, comfort or adaptability of the home or the property and the financial um, considerations that go with that. So one of the first questions, and this isn't a question you have to answer, but this is one of the first things to think about so that we can, uh, you know, where we can start helping, is do you own the home you live in? Um, and that's a very different situation, of course, than if you rent. You, your choices and options are very different from the beginning. If you own property, or even if you don't own the home you live in, but you own some other property, then understanding your choices begins with understanding the value of your property. Even if you're not thinking about moving, even if you're completely comfortable where you are, understanding the value of the property you own helps you understand if you have choices, maybe you would find something better or what choices you would have in the future if you do need them later and how you might plan financially for the future even if you're not making any changes now. So one of the very first, most basic things we can do for you or for anybody who owns property is what we call a comparative market analysis to understand the current market value of your real estate. Um, and there's no obligation to that at all. What, you know, a lot of what we do, including this presentation today, is about education. It's about making sure that more of the public in general understands real estate whether it's real estate you own or that you want to own if you're, uh, you know, if you are looking to be a buyer. Um, so really a lot of what we do is free education. And so that's what we're talking about also when we do a comparative market analysis. Um, there's no obligation at all to, for us to do this service, but we have to make an appointment with you to come physically visit the property in order to, to see it and, you know, see the different features of it 
and um, really understand the location and the condition and give you an estimate of what it could sell for if you were to sell it. Um, and while that is only a an idea of value that's a snapshot in time, it helps you plan. Um, whether you're thinking about selling immediately or whether you're thinking about using the, the equity in your property to borrow money to make changes um, or to have options or um, whether you're planning to stay there but looking to make you know estate plans understanding the value of your property is really where you have to begin so that's one of the very most very first and most basic things we can do um, the property doesn't have to look good for us to come see it some people are very you know they want to clean and fix things before we come that's not the point this is just this is not about marketing or showing it off we just literally physically need to see it it might take 10 or 15 minutes in order for us to get a, you know to just observe the property in person and then give a reliable idea of the value um and starting from there the reason you really have to start there if you own the property um if you if you have equity in the property, so if you have a mortgage on the property, then you may already be paying up that monthly bill and maybe you've had that mortgage for a long time, maybe you've paid it down, you may have equity in the property even if you have a mortgage. In fact, these days you may have a lot more equity than you think because values have been going up very quickly over the past two years um, and even before that. So really for the last, they've been steadily, um, it, values have been steadily rising or property appreciating for the last um, almost 10 years but especially in the last two years that rate of appreciation has been a lot faster not just here but everywhere um, and in some ways that's a that's the result of the pandemic but not just because of that in fact really the primary cause of of values going up around the country is that um, most older people who own homes aren't selling them <laughs> and that it, that is really the primary factor contributing to tight inventory which is what is making um, buyers compete and making prices go up so that's just true because of our um, aging population as a country it's it's true here it's true everywhere um, and that isn't to say that we're you know that not to encourage everybody to sell to change this but because it's not really a problem um, but it is what is making the market go and and we know that many people are holding on to their homes because it is hard to find options it's hard to find another affordable place to live or even or to understand if you could even do that and so not to encourage everybody who owns a home to to move and let somebody else uh, buy it and you know and let the market move up and you know change the whole economy that's not what we're saying but to make sure that people know the choices they have because quite often people are living in situations they begin to find uncomfortable and they can feel kind of trapped because you don't if you don't know your choices so so you understand value first of all we do a comparative market analysis we do a short visit to at your property and we tell you what the value of your property would be today uh, and then that lets you figure out what you would do next it lets you answer the question first of all do you have equity do you do you owe money on the property do you owe some money but still have uh, equity that you could borrow against uh, do you have no debt or no mortgage on the property and then you have even more choices because you have all the equity in the property or if you find out the value um, is not much more than the debt that you already have so if you already have a mortgage that is almost as high as the whole value of the property then you don't have equity to borrow against but still you are probably worth more than you think because everything has gone up so much just like when you go to the store you go to get gas and every all the prices you're paying are higher well that's the same if you were to look at selling or look at the value of your house if you were to sell it it's going to be more expensive than you think as well but that can work in your favor if you're the owner so the next questions that you have to think of after that um 
really start with how comfortable you are in your property. Um, and that's, you know, uh, physical comfort, you know, with the space and, um, and the, uh, um, you know, systems in the house, is it all, you know, um, working properly, you know, plumbing and heating and, but also things like going up and down stairs in and out of bathrooms, bathtubs, and, you know, things that could become more difficult over time. Um, and the condition of the property, is it, even if it's comfortable and in good shape today, is it going to stay that way? Can you maintain it? Uh, and, and then, and, you know, from that transitioning also into thinking about the finances, keeping it, you know, paying uh, the taxes, paying the mortgage, paying the utilities to keep living in that property. And then you think also, you know, is it, um, is it more than you need? Are you paying to keep up a property that you're, um, that you're only using part of? And are there ways to uh, maybe to work around that? So you think about all these things and, um, you know, we obviously, one of the primary ways we could help you next would be if you decided to sell the property you own, then we can represent you as a seller. Mm -hmm. But we're not here to, to sell our services as agents. Obviously, we love to do that, and that's, that's um, you know, a big part of our job in general. But, but that's not the only way we can help you. Once you, we help you understand the value of your property and if you have equity, you may have other financial options. Um, a reverse mortgage is one of the things you may have heard about and some people do and reverse mortgages have um, in the past have gotten sort of a bad name for themselves they've gotten a bad reputation because some people and this goes back a few years because the whole reverse mortgage um, policy uh, how those loans are structured changed a few years ago because people felt that they were kind of predatory that was how people were perceiving them what really happens and the reason that reverse mortgages got that reputation is because the people who decided to get the reverse mortgage were living in their homes. You have to be at least 65 to get a reverse mortgage. You have to have enough equity in the property. Um, but you can actually also use a reverse mortgage to buy a property. So it's not always one that you own already. But the problem is that most of the time the reverse mortgage ends, it ends two ways. Well, I guess it ends three ways. You can sell the property, but most reverse mortgages end either at the borrower's death or if the borrower cannot live in the house for more than 12 months. So if you're not resident in the house, that mortgage becomes due. So if you end up, if you go to a nursing home or live somewhere else, if you move in with family or move to any other property, any other living situation, then you're not in that property and the mortgage becomes due. But the result is that many of the people dealing with the fallout of these reverse mortgages were not the borrowers who knew how they worked and who decided to get them, but the family members who knew nothing about it and who felt that their potential inheritance had been taken from them. So reverse mortgages got a bad reputation really um, unfairly because the people who made the decisions to have the reverse mortgage were not the people who were dealing with it afterwards and those, you know, the, those people didn't understand how it had started. But reverse mortgages can actually be really great because they meet a specific need. Most of the time, if you want to go get a loan and borrow money, you have to have, um, you have to have three things. You have to have income, credit, and assets. And if you're retired or you're not working very much, you don't have a lot of income. Um, and so that part by itself can be hard to qualify if, uh, for, as it would be for a traditional mortgage or, or most other types of loans. A reverse mortgage uh, generally is structured that you don't make payments on it. You do not make monthly payments on a reverse mortgage. So they don't care if you have income or not. They are designed for people who are older and probably working less or not working. Oh, and here's the other half of our, or other part of our team. This is Dominic Cardone, my father. Yeah. He's going to chime in. Right. Thank um, you for having us. <laughs> and we're on camera, by the way. Here, come on oh, over. Hi, so hello. hello. And there you are. There. Um, so I was talking about reverse mortgages as uh, we started with CMAs and understanding value of reverse mortgages next. So, reverse mortgages are cool. They can be, right. 
Um, so that because you don't have to make payments, you can qualify for them much more easily. They're not as concerned, they're not concerned about income really at all, and they're not very concerned about credit. What they're really concerned about is just the equity in the property. Um, and what they can let you do, if you have the equity in the property and you can borrow against it, you, um, you could get a reverse mortgage potentially and use that money to um, make changes to the property you're in, to fix things that need fixing or to adapt it so that it's more comfortable to live in. Um, we can talk about some ways you, would, you might do that. Um, you, can, you can use that money to, uh, to live on, to, to cover living expenses. In fact, you could have a monthly payment from that mortgage and that could almost feel like income to you, so that could support other expenses that you have in your life, um, even utilities and taxes. Um, you could also even use a reverse mortgage, as I mentioned, to buy another property, potentially. So if that's the goal, to move and to find something else, you could use a reverse mortgage to do that. And you could do that, you could use that reverse mortgage on a property you own now to buy a new house, but you could also potentially use a reverse mortgage just to buy the new property, a reverse mortgage on the new property. But to do that, you do need um, uh, to have some more assets because you need to have a larger percentage of that purchase price in cash. Let me go back to what Christina just said about using the reverse mortgage proceeds to stay in That's the same the next property. That's thing I wanted to talk about. Yep. You might want to, maybe you have bedrooms and a bathroom upstairs mm -hmm. and you can't handle the stairs anymore, so you might use the money to put a lift in. Right. Or maybe you're going to use the money to put a, a bathroom in on the first floor. Or maybe you're going to convert a first floor room or garage into a bedroom. You can use the reverse mortgage to do that. Maybe right. you need new windows or a new roof. You can use the reverse mortgage to do that. Exactly. So that was the very next thing I was going to talk about to, to lead from uh, from one thing to the next is that, again, go, starting with understanding the value of property, um, the answer isn't, the best answer isn't always move to another property. Sometimes it is, you'd have to, you, but that's the decision you have to make knowing all the options and all of the, um, you know, all the factors and all the plans you have for your life. But if the best idea is to stay in the property that you're currently in, it may be much more comfortable if you adapt to aging in place is what they call it in the textbooks. Um, and that can be done in a lot of different ways, making even relatively small changes that make a, that make a home um, more comfortable and safer to live in. It can be anything from a bathroom, um, you know, making it easier to go up and down stairs or less necessary to go up and down stairs. Um, it can include changing or adapting the utilities and how they function so you're, um, you know, it's easier to keep the home at a comfortable temperature and maybe not waste money heating other parts of the house. Um, easier to control without having to maybe go up and down stairs for a thermostat. Um, all kinds of things like that. Um, you know, even a lot of the things that we, that, um, that they often market as smart home features really make a lot of sense for aging in place because you can use a lot of of technology. No, oh, I'm a little off the camera. You can use a lot of technology uh, to help to make a property safer and to manage it better. You know, you can have sensors that tell you when something's leaking, so you don't have to walk down to the basement to find out. You can have um, you know sensors that um, that that um, that alert somebody if you fall. You can have um, you know you can have remote systems that um, make it easier to turn on and off lights or lock doors or open and close shades that you don't have to necessarily get up and down and walk around all around your house to do. Um, so more and more, you know, one of the pra some of the practical applications of these uh, this of these technology. Um, that, you know these things we would call smart devices are used for people who are older or even people who are handicapped and for safety and security not just for you know fun techie convenience so um, 
Reverse mortgages are one of the ways that you can finance that. We can also help, we can help connect you with uh, great experienced reverse mortgage lenders because it is a specialty, so not every lender can even tell you about a reverse mortgage or help you get one. Uh, but there are other kinds of loans and other uh, financial resources that may be available too, and we can connect you with contractors who uh, specialize in doing these kind of updates to adapt the home to make it uh, more comfortable and safer. So we can help you figure this out and we can, you know, back to the question of value where we started, um, we can help you understand where some of these changes might improve your property and add to the value or detract from the property. So you're not just making these things, these changes or improvements for your own convenience, but also with an eye to the value of your property over time. Um, and one yeah. of the other points of a reverse mortgage is some people find themselves, they use the term property poor, mm -hmm. and they need uh, income uh, to live, right. and they have to take care of this house, but they have no mortgage on the house, uh, but they don't have enough money to take care of it. So they think to themselves, well, I need to sell the house and get that money so I can go rent an apartment. Well, with a reverse mortgage, you don't need to do that. You can stay in stay your in home. House. You can get the money the, that's, you know, that's tied up in your home, the equity, and you can get some of that equity and you can live off of it. You can pay your bills, but you can also do improvements to the house to make it more comfortable mm -hmm. and safer, mm -hmm. as Christina says. Mm -hmm. So the idea of reverse mortgage is really phenomenal in, in concept. Uh, and remember, there is no monthly payment on the reverse mortgage. You don't write a check out to the bank. In fact, in some cases, if you need the income, the check will write a check. The bank will write a check out to you each month, maybe five hundred dollars a month for the rest of your life. That's you know nice additional income. Now, every time they write you a check, that that goes against the equity in your home. So if you were planning on leaving your $100,000 home to your children, well, maybe you're not going to leave a $100,000 home to your children. Maybe it's going to only be, you know, it's only going to have equity of $50,000 by the time you pass on because all those years you're using it. But what's really nice is if they give you that money each month and they even exceed the amount of value in the home, they keep giving you the money. And you don't ever have to worry about it. You can outlive. <laughs> you can take advantage of the system and just keep living if you yes. can. And uh, there's no there's no way for the bank to come after you or your estate for any money. Um, they're that's non, why they're a, called non-recourse loans. Right. So they and never come after yeah. you if you owe them more. And you have to pay, when you get the loan, you have to pay what's called an insurance mm -hmm. premium that ensures the bank, in case you live too long, the bank doesn't lo really lose money. Let's not worry about the banks yeah. so much. They're, they're covered. Yeah. It, yeah. Th again, oh yeah, question. Is, is the Please. interest rate on reverse mortgage higher than banks? It will be a little higher than a, than a conventional mortgage. Just a little higher, but about the much. same, almost the same. What? Y'all's main concern here is mainly yeah. shooting at seniors, am I right? Mm -hmm. And downside. Reverse mortgages are. Yeah. Yeah. Downsizing is the main thing. Yeah. You have to be 62 Candy. years of age or older to get a reverse mortgage. At least, yeah. Okay, that's good. And the interest rate isn't really, so the interest rate might be a little higher, but where the reverse mortgage makes its money is there are higher fees. Yeah. So you do pay for this convenience for a lot of the features of this, but when when you need it, it works because it allows you to use and to live on the equity in your house while you still own your house. Normally the only way you get that equity out is by selling it and then you don't have that property anymore. With a reverse mortgage it's it's pretty unique because you get to keep the property and use the equity. I understand. With a reverse mortgage you have paid it, you'll pay taxes on the house? They, they could but they will, they'll have to know the real estate taxes on the house to qualify you for the mortgage. And you could use the, the money from the reverse mortgage, the money you borrow to pay the taxes 
or they could make sure they get paid as part of the mortgage. If they are giving you a reverse mortgage for $100,000 or $50,000, they evaluate whether or not you have the ability, maybe your Social Security check or your pension, to pay the taxes. If you don't, they'll still give you the reverse mortgage, but they'll hold back money yeah. so that they will pay the taxes. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it works either yeah. way. And they do consider the condition of the property as well, because, again, in this example, if you have a $100,000 property, if you were going to borrow $100,000, but if the property was going to fall into bad condition, if you didn't maintain it, um, then, you know, by the time you pass on, the bank might end up taking the property when it's only worth $80,000. And so they do also consider the condition and they want to either make sure that you have the assets to continue maintaining the property, or again, they will let you borrow a little bit less and they'll hold some back so they can make sure they have that value. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's no uh, real qualifying for a reverse mortgage in that to get a normal mortgage, you have to show that you have good income, you have to show that you have good credit, uh, and you even have to show that you have down payment. Mm -hmm. Well, you don't need that on a reverse mortgage as long as there's enough equity in the home. Uh, they will lend you the, the yeah. money. Yeah. So it's not the only answer, but it is one worth considering because it does, it is, it's designed for older homeowners to be able to do it and to qualify more easily. And they're structured in such a way that you can continue using them as long as you live and live in the property. Um, and they don't become due until either you pass away or you don't live in the property. For one year. For if you a, move for out for two months year. because yeah. you, you, you went to yeah. rehab for you know, knee replacement, whatever, as long as you move back into the property within a year, they don't call it due. But if you die or if you move out for more than a year, mm -hmm. then they call the mortgage due. Mm -hmm. But right. that just means you either have to pay the balance off or you let the bank take the property. Right. You either, at the, when the mortgage comes due, um, whether you're still alive to deal with it or not, either you're going <coughs> to sell the property to pay it off or, um, or the bank will take the property. Um, but you've gotten to use all the equity in the meantime. The real interesting thing is, what Christina explained earlier, is maybe the house you have is too big and you want to buy something mm -hmm. small, maybe in a condominium or something like that. You can buy the condominium using a reverse mortgage. Um, so that's an, an and then right. because the requirement of a reverse mortgage is you must live in the property. So if you're property buying a condo you that you're going to live in, they'll give you the mortgage on so the condo. You can use a reverse mortgage to purchase in two two ways. So one is the downsizing way that that in that model. Let's say you own a three hundred thousand dollar house, but you want to move into something smaller, let's say worth $100,000. If you took a reverse mortgage out on the $300,000 property, they could would lend you at least 100000 And you could take that and use that to purchase the new property for 100000 sell the property for 300000 pay as you sell that, you would pay off the reverse mortgage, and you would own the new property debt free. By t but you would not have to do the sell and buy at the same time. You would get to make it more comfortable and buy before you sell by using the reverse mortgage. I have, I have cousins who are in their 80s and they are now doing their second reverse mortgage. They had a reverse mortgage on a house, they sold it, paid it off, and the house right across the street from their daughter and grandchildren came on the market and they bought that, and they're even fixing it up using a reverse mortgage to buy the property. Because once they give you the money, you can use it for whatever you want. Yeah, you can use it for whatever you want. You, if you have, say, say you have a, a grown child, a son or a daughter, mm -hmm. and they have a home, and they say, well, you know what, when you come visit, we want to have a little in-law quarters for you. Mm -hmm. But they don't have the money. You can say, well, I'll give you the money to put the in-law quarters in. Use the reverse mortgage and, But you don't have any money in the bank. Ah, you can get a reverse mortgage, which will give you the money, and then you can use it to help your kids put a, a, an in-law suite for you to visit. Now, you can't live 
full time in the in-law suite because then the reverse mortgage is going to come due because you're not going to be living in the house on which the reverse mortgage is. Wow. Right. It can get a little complicated. Well, that's yeah, why we would help you if you did, if you wanted to. Yeah, the only one thing on reverse mortgage is only a van if a person needs um, extra income, right? Outside of that, it's not well, beneficial. Well, income or if you need it to do if you need it to do something else like purchase another property or um or make improvements to a property because you can use the money for you can borrow it in a few different ways the income model is where the reverse mortgage would send you a check every month so it would feel like income and that has been that's one of the traditional ways to do it mm -hmm. but you can also get a lump sum um similar to what you might get if you got a home equity loan or you know a cash out um, mortgage on your house what they call sometimes a cash out refinance you go you borrow money and you get um, the, they deposit that money in your bank account or you can get it like a line of credit where you get um, a checkbook a checkbook right and so then they you can say, write checks up to right so they say you've got a fifty thousand or a hundred thousand dollars against your house you're, you're you're actually you know it's like you're taking money out of your house every time you write a check but you can write checks up to a hundred thousand and use them any way you need to. So you can it's very use, flexible. You can use the money any way you want. You're not supposed to, but you could go to the casino with the money. That'd be a bad idea. Nobody but, can. That's a bad idea. You can do but, whatever you want. With but it, they can't you stop you from doing that. <laughs> <laughs> it's your money. Right. So then, what happens if you don't owe anything on the house and it's just your tax mm -hmm. yeah. and you found yeah. out that the house is two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Is it better for you to do what you were just saying or just sell it? Well, that's so that's an example of what where of where we started. Once you know understand what the value is, but then you have to think about all your other needs. And we you know we could help you sit down and and maybe not just us, maybe also family who's involved in a financial advisor if you have one. Um, but you'd consider all your needs whether that made sense or not but mm -hmm. it might make sense to sell it if you're not very comfortable there and if you would do something with that two hundred and fifty thousand dollars that you'd be more comfortable with living somewhere else or investing it in something else or get passing it on to your kids or whatever right. um, or taking care of medical problems what, what you know whatever if you wanted that money now more more than sort of leaving it in the bank of your house okay. your house like a bank account or you keep the house and you only borrow what you need that might be a good reason to get a reverse mortgage um, to, if you're comfortable in the house and want to keep owning it then only take from it as much money as you need maybe you need maybe you need money to live on each month maybe five hundred dollars each month or maybe you need money to do some improvements to the house mm -hmm. and if you don't need the money don't consider a reverse mortgage right because I know somebody that they did that and she owned her her house and basically she just couldn't always pay, pay taxes. the tax. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Here, the tax, that, the, in this part of the world, this is always about taxes. Her. Absolutely. So basically, yeah. I mean, she's passed away now, but mm -hmm. basically the house is just sitting there. No, and that's that's what's unfortunate. That's one of the reasons we want to make sure people know their options better because where we are, a lot of people, the taxes are the biggest expense, and even without a mortgage, they will feel like they have to sell their house because they can't pay taxes if they don't know there are other ways they might be able to pay their taxes, and that would be unfortunate because you give up the whole property, and maybe you don't have another comfortable place to live or not as easy, and maybe it's not even maybe the other choices you have are not even as affordable mm. you know taxes are difficult because they come as a big lump every year but if you but that may actually be cheaper than paying rent somewhere else mm -hmm. probably is so just knowing the way like knowing that a reverse mortgage is an option or what other financial options you have could help you stay mm. and pay the taxes yeah, and keep the profit yeah, yeah. You have to look at your whole picture, yes. and we yes. can help you with that. Yes. The original design, the original, when they invented a reverse mortgage, the concept was simple. All the people have a home. 
they have all the equity in it because they paid off the mortgage 20 years ago. <laughs> They've been there for 50 years. And now they think that their only solution is to sell the home because they need income or uh, they can't handle the repairs on the, the home. taxes and the repairs. Yeah. So the idea of the reverse mortgage was if you're an older person and you want to stay in your home, we have a financial method for you to do that. We can let you use the equity in your home to stay in your home, and that, if that's what you want, a reverse right. mortgage can help you do that. Mm -hmm. But a reverse mortgage can help you do other things too. Right. Yeah. And maybe a reverse mortgage is not something you should consider. Right. You have that's to look perfect. at your whole financial, personal, physical, you have to look at the house. There's a lot of things, and we can help you. And when we don't have the ability, we can point you in the direction of the person who can help you, maybe the financial advisor or the lawyer or, yeah. or the contractor who's going to, you know, uh, put the powder room in, whatever it is, mm -hmm. we can help quite, with that. Quite often, you know, people get stuck at a small obstacle, whether it's their tax bill once a year or their, um, you know, whatever repair is needed on the house, you know, some, some big ticket item like a new heater or a new roof that is hard to pay for and you, they get stuck. And then they feel like they don't have choices and have to sell or can't keep it. Um, and there, there may be a lot more options than people generally consider. So we want to help people understand that. Um, but also, the decisions about things like a reverse mortgage and, and you know, looking at the whole picture of your needs pers physically and financially, you know, sometimes that means, you know, thinking about complex medical stuff financial planning um, even, even when you don't think you need a financial planner it's like when it's like when you don't need an accountant until you need an accountant uh, you know like uh, it helps sometimes to get a little bit of professional advice to make a plan that makes sense and if estate you, planning and if you have family children right, family. or brothers sister they can be part of the plan right. mm -hmm. um, and estate planning is something that um, Again, people often put off and think they don't need, but it can really help, um, you know, you and family members understand what's what's going to happen and make a plan that makes sense so that you make arrangements now when you can control them about what happens afterwards when you can't. Mm -hmm. And that can be about your property and other assets. So, and and the two legal instruments yeah. that everybody should have, whether they're 30 years old or 80 years old. Mm -hmm. One is a will, and the other is a power of attorney. Mm -hmm. There's two types of powers of attorney. A medical power of attorney for someone to make decisions for you medically if you're not able to do it for yourself. And the other is a financial power of attorney for someone who can make financial decisions for you if you can't do it for yourself. Mm -hmm. um, just coincidentally, last week, mm -hmm. Christina and I are very close to someone who's 88 years old and she's got no family and she finally met with the attorney and created a will and created a power of attorney. She asked me to be her medical power of attorney about a year and a half ago mm -hmm. because she had, she well, broke her neck, she yeah. needed heart surgery, and over the years I've been at her bedside helping her and now I have the legal authority to help her officially. And so those are good ideas yeah. to have. And these things come up, again, we're, we're real estate agents. We're not financial advisors or attorneys um, or accountants uh, or contractors, but we can help connect you with these people if needed because once you start having the conversations, again, that start with understanding value of property, then then you, you often need to put these other pieces together. Um, not everybody needs every one of them, but you need to, to put them together and consider them all as a whole. So, um, where did I want to wrap up? So, starting with the value of the property, um, you know, understanding financial options like a reverse mortgage, for example, that can allow you to stay and age in place comfortably or give you more options to live comfortably in other places, um, more options than you may have thought you had. And then, of course, we can help sell property so you know that's the, the the most straightforward way that real estate agents can help um, but before we ever do that we want to make sure that you have considered a whole picture 
of all of your needs and plans for the future and that you know where the next comfortable place that you're going to live is because too many people again feel pushed or trapped into these decisions and we hear stories uh, not clients we helped but other people's clients where they sell a house or sell a property because they, they feel that they had to for some reason and then they just end up in another situation that's less stable and no more secure um, I just helped a, a woman in her 80s who sold her property she felt like she couldn't keep it moved into an apartment and guess what I helped her do you know four or five years later buy the house next door to the one she used to own because in fact that was a lot better for her she thought renting was going to give her more control financially when she retired but in fact it's not really those prices aren't fixed her rent went up utilities went up it was not as secure and she wanted to go back if only she, you know, she would have saved money over the long run if she just stayed where she was but she didn't consider all the options at the time so um sometimes it's better to stay where you are but when it's when it's a good decision to sell then you have a particular set of needs obviously every seller generally wants to get the best price and terms for their property which we can help you do but that amounts to, that's more um, that's more specific a lot of the time than just selling every property the same way not every property gets sold the same way and one of the things that we specialize in is helping people sell when they need to sell quickly when their properties are not necessarily in perfect con condition not everything has to be updated and freshly painted and look like it's out of a catalog um, we can sell properties uh, in any condition and still sell them very well that's one of the good uh, you know things that's been really good uh, especially in this market in recent years it's been a seller's market so um, it's easier to sell and uh, so nobody should be giving you advice that says you have to spend all this money in order to sell your property you should be able to sell it without spending much money or any money do you sell in Delaware County and Phillips County too Delaware oh. yep Mm -hmm. and all of Chester Delaware County. County yes but also Delaware State. Delaware State my dad's right. licensed in Delaware we do all of okay. Delaware County Chester County uh, we can go into the city we do Montgomery County um, New Jersey New Jersey you got it we got you covered yeah yeah thank you we can even connect you with other realtors who are senior real estate specialists anywhere in the country I don't know if Christina said because I came late we teach a course called senior real estate specialist mm -hmm once a month to other real estate agents to help them understand how to meet the housing needs of older Americans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did, so is there another question or someone raise yeah. their hand? What is your selling rate percentage? Selling, I'm sorry? Your percentage. What's our commission sell? rate commission? to sell? Your percentage, yes. <laughs> it is negotiable, but most of the time it is 6% of the sale price, which we share. The listing broker in this marketplace and in most marketplace agrees to usually pay about half of that commission to the agent who represents the buyer. These are things negotiated in every listing contract with every seller. So every seller, we explain all the costs of selling and give you an estimate of all the costs, not just ours, but every other cost you would have in the transaction. And again, that's part of what would play into any you know whole financial plan as you make these decisions. Are y'all backed by Better Business Bureau? Oh, that's a good question. You don't get backed by the Better Business Bureau. You, you're just- We're each independent contractor. Right. The companies are. But I've been a broker for 39 years. Christine has been a broker for 18 uh, it's years. It's not a broker. A salesperson. Yeah. Uh, I'm the broker for the, the entire company and I have a lot of credentials. And Christina Perfect. has a lot of credentials. We have a reputation and we're not about making money although we need to put food on our table we're about serving you serving the consumer and when we specialize with the older consumers we have to have extra understanding knowledge that we're sharing and compassion so um, be careful that as in anything in life it's not only about price right. Uh, while you could think you're going to save money by paying less, you may in the long run end up costing yourself more money. You may also yeah. not be getting the quality of service that you deserve. And we're, back to what I was saying about when we counsel you, a seller selling their property, 
and it's not always it doesn't always have to be in perfect condition we are we also specialize in negotiating for every seller in every situation a lot of other realtors if a property is not in such good condition or the seller is they perceive to be more motivated or have less financial um, you know just have less money then they don't necessarily um, negotiate as hard for every client because it you perceive to have less options so they give you less options and that's mm -hmm. never correct um, so really we take um, you know a big part of our job is making sure that the clients always in charge and making sure you have absolutely all the options which include the options to sometimes decide not to do this or not to sell or not to do something and um, when when we but when we start with education it's because we want to empower the clients all of you every consumer even before you decide to work with us to decide if you work with us and then to decide if you do any particular transaction along the way and we only um, we only ever get paid if a property goes to settlement but you're in complete control of all the decisions before that so if it's never if it's not right you don't even get there and when we become your agent we are obligated to look out for your interest to protect you to advocate for you to to negotiate on your behalf to treat you like you're our family. That's what we have. We have our little slogan. We treat our clients like they're family. Uh, I always say, but the older I get, it makes a little less sense. I say we try to treat you like you're our mother or our father. So for you all, it's now brother or sister. It's her mother or father. Okay. So you get the idea. Yeah. And it's, you know, we, um, in real estate, unfortunately, most agents uh, who are not. Right. Thank you for thanks. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to nice wrap to up. You. Take a card. Yeah. Um, thank. Thanks. So. Um, did you get a bag? Yes. Did you get a bag? I think you did, right? Um, yeah. yeah. Did, you got one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, what was the answer? That. Um, We're going to treat them like family. We're going to advocate for them. Yeah. All right. But before we ever become uh, before we ever become a listing agent, you know, selling someone's property, we really want to be a resource for everybody. That's why we're here, um, because we want all of you to be able to call us anytime you have a question for yourselves or family or friends to say, hey, does this sound right? Or you know, what could this person do in this situation? Or what's the value of this property? Um, and there's no obligation to any of that. So we we really do a lot of even just, you know just consumer education as part of our specialty because it really is so important whether you end up buying or selling or whether you end up choosing us to represent you or somebody else. Um, because unfortunately, most of the real estate industry is out there to just have more sales and to do it faster and more efficiently. And again, that's not always perfect for everybody. So we know that a lot of people need to slow down and consider a lot more things and have a lot more financial options that aren't just about selling before you can make a decision about selling. So if we could only come here and sit down with you and say, okay, here's how we sell your house, we wouldn't be giving you all the options that you need. And we really want to make sure you have all those choices. So, um, so it's no pressure and it's a lot of education and we hope that anybody would call us for, for any real estate questions, even before you make decisions. If um, some of our viewers that are not present today are interested with um, in receiving more information uh, and calling you, what is the phone number that they can reach you? Um, so my cell phone is the best way to reach me all the time, anytime, which is 610. Four five three six one four six, and I'll say my name and company again. I'm Christina Cardone with Keller Williams Real Estate, and my the best phone number is six one zero four five three six one four six. And this is Dominic Cardone, my father, but you'll reach me probably faster than you will.